This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> my name is Tiffany. I'm 32 years old and I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Wesley is my husband and he and I have been married around a year and a half and we have a son together. His name is Noah and he is 14 months. Tiffany has always been a beautiful person. She's funny. She's always joking. Be yourself. Be yourself. She's the most important thing to me. She's my whole world. She's a very smart girl. She loves to draw. She's very good at it. I have a cosmetology degree. I also have a graphic design and animation degree. But motherhood is what I always wanted. Once Noah was born, it was amazing watching her. Whoa. Change your pants. Everything was for him first. Well, take a snooze. For an outsider looking in, I look like a regular stay-at-home mom but I am anything but that. I am a full-fledged heroin addict. Tiffany is the all-American girl gone bad. I will shoot meth, I will shoot coke, I will shoot crack, I will shoot heroin, I will shoot anything. The fact that I've lost custody of three children in that moment, I don't care. The fact that I'm on four different probations in four different counties, I don't care. When Tiffany is high, she's like a zombie. I'm so worried about you. Yeah. You're so high right now. I don't know where you've been. I don't know what happened to you. Her sleeping becomes dangerous. She has seizures and stops breathing. Tiffany. Wesley and I have to stay up and watch her. We don't know if she's OK. We have to check her breathing because she has overdosed. Our son can't have you dying. You know that, right? This is 100% life or death. When Tiffany was born, she was the most precious, beautiful little girl. My mom and my dad got divorced when I was one, and my dad was never around. He never really had much of a relationship with her. It was just me and my mom, but I had a great childhood. She was very outgoing, and uh, she did well in school. After she graduated, she went to a private arts college here in Atlanta. Tiffany got a degree in graphic design. What she really wanted to do was go work in an advertising agency. I was about 24 when I met my ex-husband, and my life kind of went a different route than, you know, having a career. We had been together about three months, and I, we found out I was pregnant. We had a beautiful, huge wedding, and I was happy. I was very happy. But when I gave birth to my son, he tore me literally from end to end. I had 57 stitches in the front and in the back. The doctor prescribed me oxycodone, and I didn't know that it only took a week to get dependent on opiates before you would have withdrawals from them. After three months, I'd healed, and the doctor quit giving me my prescription. And so I started to buy Oxycontin from the streets and almost put me and my ex-husband in bankruptcy because I was spending all of our money on these pills. I think she suffered from postpartum a lot. And I don't think any of us really recognized it so much because the pills were beginning to make an appearance. I always wanted to be a mom. I love them so much. And I love being able to be a mother. But after my second born, I dove right back into the Oxycontin. And then, with a blink of an eye, I found out I was pregnant again with my third born. And so, for her safety, my doctor was like, I had to get on methadone. And one thing that Tiffany had not realized and was not made clear to any of us was that her being on that methadone was going to addict the baby. She was in the NICU for a full month while they weaned her off of the methadone with morphine. My ex-husband never forgave me for that. 
I think Tiffany had tremendous postpartum depression. I mean, number one, she had three children in four years and her body never got to recover. And the problem is, is you're dealing with a husband that doesn't know what a postpartum is, doesn't believe in it, thinks it's just a crock. That is when I was introduced to heroin. Tiffany began to really act erratically. It was like it. I've lost everything. I've lost my husband. I've lost my kids. I had a new love. It wasn't my. It wasn't my children anymore. It was heroin. I got deeper and deeper into my addiction. I got evicted, lost my car. I ended up doing time in jail. Uh, I got court ordered to a rehab. While I was in recovery, I met my current husband. Within two weeks, she was all I thought about. We spent every second together that we could. Um, we found out she was pregnant about a month later. And I was happy, it, it didn't scare me at all. After we brought Noah home, things were going really well. I was settling into mommy life. And about a month after we got home, the postpartum, it happened again. This time, it was really bad. I dove into doing dope like I had never quit. On top of everything else I pay for, I have to pay for her methadone. So you need 15 for tomorrow, and 15, when are you having your other test done? I think tomorrow. Okay. Nancy, so I'm gonna owe him for that too. My mother should not trust me. Okay, so how much is that? 45. I will lie to my mom and say that I took a drug screen that I need to pay for, which I really don't, so that way I can have money to buy a shot of heroin. Bye, babe. Love you. Let me know when you get there. I feel methadone is a waste of money. It doesn't stop her from using, it doesn't make her stop breaking laws to get dope. It just keeps her from getting sick when she can. How far y'all are willing to go with her if she says she's not gonna go to treatment tomorrow? I'll keep paying her child support. She doesn't go, I quit. Is that really, really something that you can do? Yeah. And if the child support stops, she'd be arrested again, right? Yes. Okay, so she's already on probation in four counties. But you are willing to stop paying that child support, which would get her arrested anyway. If I have to, I'll call her probation in Cobb County. Okay. Are you willing to go along with that, Wesley? Mm -hmm. We need to have something that will pull a little more at her heartstrings, make her feel truly threatened. And I think that would be with you, Wesley. Mm -hmm. Would you be prepared to tell her that you would take the baby permanently and that you would no longer be part of the picture. Oh my gosh, there's like everybody here. Oh my gosh. Hi. Hi Sugar. Dear Tiffany, I'm here because I love you with all my heart and I want you to grow old with grandchildren of your own. But the path you've taken doesn't show you want the same. It was so nice to be able to trust you when you were clean and sober, but that's changed within the last 10 months. When Wesley found the drugs in February, it killed me. You were living in my house and drugs were hidden everywhere, but you didn't care about me, Wesley, or even Noah. You wanted to go to the methadone clinic, and although it's costing a lot when we are struggling, we have done it. And what did you do? Apparently saved up until you could go get a shot and go to the dope boy. Please take the chance to learn the coping skills that you need to deal with life. Be the mom I know you are and that you want to be and nothing will be able to stop you. I love you. Dear baby girl, I am writing you this letter with a heavy heart. You have no idea how much I love you. I remember our wedding day and how yet again I was so nervous because why would someone so great want someone like me? My best memories are of you, Noah, and I, though, just us doing nothing together. That never happens anymore. You have changed, baby. You have become distant. You do things you said you would never do. 
But the biggest change is that you are never around for Noah and I, and it is killing me inside. I know you can do this, baby. I believe in you more than anything. I love you with all my heart and will never abandon you if you don't abandon us. Please accept this help. Will you go with Sylvia today? Go where? Go to treatment. Where? In California. Holy For how long? Well, that'll depend on when you get there, but I just want to let you know that you'll be in a medical detox for probably 10 to 12 days. Like, like, like now? Yeah, like now. Can I smoke? Cigarettes? Absolutely. <laughs> you can smoke all you want to. So, do we have a yes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> guys. Give me a hug. Yeah. Hi, Tiffany. I'm Sean. Welcome to Insight. Today is my 60 days sober. Physically, I feel good. I never thought I would come to California. Here, I'm like calm and happy. How are you really feeling? I mean, I'm OK on a day-to-day -day basis. But at night, Wesley and I just fight all the time. I try and set these healthy boundaries, and he walks all over them. I try and turn off the phone, and then I turn it back on, and I have 85 text messages. Your family is so sick in y'all's codependency. It's a vicious triangle. It's jeopardizing your sobriety. I know, and that's what I told him. I said, I'm not even working on myself at this point. I said, all I'm doing is putting all my energy in to you and I fighting. And I mean, I really do want this marriage to, you know, work. If you go back into that environment, you are not gonna be able to stay healthy. I will tell you that right now. That if I don't stay out here and I don't get better, that what good am I gonna be to Noah? I think I'm where I'm supposed to be.